Is character modeling impossible to learn? No, definitely not. If you're looking to get into character design, you're probably hearing terms like hyperrealism, hair particles, uh, ray tracing, uh, subsurface scattering, uh, mu mu muscle simulations, and all that stuff, granted, is complicated. But the truth is, when you boil it down, anyone can get started creating 3D characters. And in this video, we are going to explain the entire character creation process and take a look at some of the cool technology behind some of your favorite characters. This is gonna be a fun video. This entire video was inspired by our brand new character creation course, the Character Artist Handbook, which is now officially live. In the course, you're gonna learn how to create your first 3D game character with incredibly simple and easy to understand lessons. So get your notebooks out and keep those beautiful peepers facing the front of the screen because class is in session. Welcome to the next episode of Stylization. So let's get right into 3D modeling. When 3D modeling a character, you have to remember- Whoa, hang on, hang on, hey, hey. Artists don't just jump right into modeling a character. That's a recipe for disaster. Before you hop into any software, I want to show you the beautiful world of... The concepting phase is the first step in bringing a character to life. And it's easily one of the most exciting parts of the entire process. It's where you get to be completely free, exploring ideas, styles, and references that are going to inspire your character. This is the part where anything goes. Wild costume designs, exaggerated body proportions, or even unique weapon ideas. And you can dream up the most fantastical characters, knowing that changes and refinements are going to come later. This is where the spirit of a character is born. Remember that. But you, you're probably wondering, okay, how do we actually do this concepting thing? Tools like PureRef make this process easier by allowing you to organize your references into mood boards. Artists pull references from a broad range of sources, not just other characters. Historical clothing, animals, or architecture to inspire their design. The goal is to create a strong foundation, focusing on shapes, colors and textures that will define your character's look. To create strong character design, focus on key principles like silhouettes and color palettes. Start with basic shapes that convey the character's personality like rounded shapes for friendly characters and sharp shapes for more dangerous ones. And keep the design simple but distinctive. Mix and match references creatively, but do not overcomplicate the design. Remember, Simplicity and clarity will make your character stand out. Pikachu. But this is where beginners start to get scared. Going from a concept to this must seem super daunting. But don't worry, artists have a simple and really well-known technique that makes things a hundred times easier. Let's talk about blocking. Blocking is the first step in the 3D modeling process, where you build out the most important shapes using basic geometry, also known as primitives. I'm oversimplifying things a bit, but imagine starting with a sphere for the head, cylinders for the arms and legs, and a big box for the torso. The purpose isn't to make the model look polished or detailed yet. It's all about nailing the proportions and getting the overall form right before you dive into the more detailed work. It may seem basic, but this is a crucial step that sets the foundation for the entire character. Blocking allows you to focus on the structure and silhouette of the character before getting bogged down in the details. Blocking helps answer questions like, how tall should the character be? How broad should the shoulders look? Where do the limbs sit on the body? Getting these answers right early on can save you a ton of time later, preventing any proportion mishaps that may be difficult to fix once you've added details. The beautiful thing is, this technique works for just about anything. 
If you want to get a start on your character's clothing, just block out the shapes first. You don't need to be a professional modeler. Just get the basic shape down and you can refine it later. This blocking technique is used all over your favorite games. It's how environment designers get started on building massive cities. It's how texture artists create complex materials. Animators even have a blockout phase where they create a rough draft of the movement's appearance. What makes this phase so powerful is the iterative refinement. Blocking allows for flexibility. You can always go back and adjust proportions or the pose as your design evolves. It's a phase that adapts to changes and helps you keep your design balanced. But most importantly for character design, Blocking serves a crucial purpose. It helps set the foundation for what is arguably the most important phase of the process, a process called sculpting. Ooh, 3D sculpting is the process of shaping a digital object, like a character, almost exactly like you would with clay in the real world. Unlike traditional 3D modeling, which uses polygons and edges to define shapes, sculpting allows for more fluid, organic forms. There are many types of 3D art, but character sculpting is special because it gives you the freedom to design lifelike or stylized characters with as much detail as you want. Now, you might be wondering, what do I need to get started? First, you'll need 3D sculpting software. Some popular options include Blender, a free, powerful tool that's perfect for beginners and pros alike. You could also look into ZBrush. It's an industry standard software used by professionals in film and game development. It's more advanced, but it's great once you got the basics down. Both of these programs come with tools that mimic traditional sculpting techniques like pushing, pulling, pinching and smoothing. It's got pretty much everything you'll need. In sculpting, you'll mostly use brushes. These are digital tools that manipulate the surface of your model. Brushes like Clay Buildup or Smooth are your go-to for forming the basic shapes and refining details of your character. But don't worry about learning every tool right away. Start simple, and as you get more comfortable, you can explore more advanced techniques. And sculpting may seem scary to start, but now that the blockout phase is done, you're already well on your way. The basic idea is is that you're gonna start with simple shapes and then gradually improve and polish your model. You don't need to worry about perfection early on. The beauty of sculpting is that it allows you to build up your details over time. I'm gonna walk you through these steps in a little more detail. Your blockout's already completed. So the next step is refining the silhouette, which is the outer shape of your model. This is where you'll start adjusting the anatomy, enhancing the proportions and defining the major landmarks on your character's body. Think about broad muscle groups, the curve of the spine or the shape of the limbs. You're still focusing on big picture elements here. So don't worry about the tiny details just yet. Just relax and have fun. Once the silhouette looks solid, it's time to start refining key areas. You'll give special attention to places like the face, the hands, and clothing folds, areas that naturally draw attention and require a little more precision. At this stage, you'll be refining facial features, shaping muscles, and making sure your character reads well from all angles. And now here comes my favorite part, adding the small details, which is really gonna make your character pop. This is where you'll sculpt things like skin textures, fabric wrinkles, and any other subtle elements that give your model life and, and realism. You can use more detailed brushes for these finer touches, but remember, the big shapes always come first. The details should complement, not overwhelm, the overall form. By following these steps, over time you'll go from a rough blockout to a more detailed, polished sculpt. The key is to take it one step at a time. Refine the large shapes, then work your way down to the finer details. And remember, it's okay if things don't look perfect immediately. Sculpting is a gradual process of improvement. Now that you have a surface level idea of how sculpting works, let's talk about the kind of characters you might want to create. If you're watching this video, it means you're probably a beginner. So maybe think about starting with stylized characters. They can be more forgiving because you have more creative freedom to exaggerate proportions or simplify details. For example, stylized characters can have bigger heads, larger eyes, and simplified body forms similar to anime or cartoon characters. These tend to be easier to sculpt because they don't require perfect anatomy or intricate details. Realistic characters, on the other hand, require a deeper understanding of human anatomy. You'll need to pay close attention to proportions, muscles, and the way the skin behaves. But remember, both styles are valid and many artists blend the two together. Here's the truth. Sculpting is a skill and it takes practice. 
Don't be discouraged if your first sculpts don't turn out exactly as you envisioned. Each sculpt you create will help you learn something new, whether it's understanding form, anatomy, or how light interacts with the surface. Remember, start small. Practice creating simple objects like a head, a hand, or even a cartoon character. As you get more comfortable, move on to more complex projects. So, you finish sculpting your character, but you might notice something. It's incredibly detailed, and while all those details look great, they come at a cost. The mesh you've sculpted is dense with polygons. I'm talking about millions and millions of polygons. This can make your model hard or completely impossible to animate to use in real-time environments like video games. This is where a technique called retopology comes in. Retopology is the process of simplifying and reorganizing the geometry of your sculpt into a more optimized, animation-friendly model. In other words, you're creating the mesh with fewer, well-placed polygons that follow the natural contours of your character. This new mesh is cleaner and much more efficient. But you're probably wondering, hey, stylized station. Why is this necessary? Imagine trying to animate a character that has millions of tiny, dense polygons. It would be a nightmare for your computer to handle, and your game or animation would likely run very slowly, if at all. Retopology reduces the polygon count while maintaining the overall shape of your character, making it ready for animation, rigging, and texturing. Now there's three key concepts in retopology I want to talk about. The first one is called edge flow. This refers to how the edges of your polygons follow the natural lines of your model. A good edge flow allows your character to deform correctly when animated, especially around joints like the shoulders, elbows, and knees. The second key concept is your polygon budget. When retopologizing, you'll be working to reduce the number of polygons, keeping as few as possible while still retaining the details of your model. When retopologizing, you generally want to work with quads, which are four-sided polygons, instead of triangles. Quads deform better during animation and make a future technique, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, much easier later on. Now this process may seem technical, but let's simplify it into a step-by-step -step process that's a little more approachable. When you retopologize, focus on key areas that will move or bend, like the shoulders, elbows, and the face. These areas are going to need more careful attention to edge flow. The rest of the body, like the torso, can have larger, simpler polygons. Once your new mesh is created, you can test it in different poses or with basic animations to see how well it deforms. If you see pinching or weird stretching, it might mean the edge flow needs to be adjusted. I know a lot of people complain about retopology and say it's a hassle, but I actually find it quite relaxing. Retopology may seem like an extra step, but it's essential to turning your beautiful sculpt into a functional, usable model that won't slow down your project. But for a more detailed character, you can't just hop straight into texturing. There's a critical step that we need to take called UV unwrapping. So what are UVs and why are they necessary? Your character is fully sculpted and retopologized, but to apply your textures correctly, you need to unwrap your 3D model into a 2D map. This is what UV unwrapping does. I want you to think of it like peeling the skin off of an orange. The orange is your 3D character, and the unwrapped skin is your 2D template. UVs guide your textures, telling the software where every pixel of your texture should go on the model. Without UVs, textures would look distorted and stretched. UV unwrapping ensures textures fit correctly across the surface. While this sounds daunting, it becomes much easier once you understand the basics. Here's how it works. The first step in UV unwrapping is placing something called seams on your models. These seams act like cuts in your orange peel, telling the software where to split your 3D model to create a flat UV map. The trick is to hide seams in less noticeable areas, like the inner thighs or behind the ears. Once you've set your seams, the software will flatten your 3D model into a 2D map. This is where your model looks a bit like a puzzle or a paper cutout. You'll arrange these islands efficiently so that every part of your model gets a good amount of texture resolution. Once your UVs are laid out, you'll apply a test texture, like a checkerboard pattern, to see how evenly your UVs are laid out. If you see any warping or stretching, you can adjust the UVs to make sure the texture is uniform across the model. With retopology and UV unwrapping, it can be a pretty tedious process, but I highly recommend just taking your time and having fun with it. Okay, so you've unwrapped your character you could jump straight into texturing. But before you do, I want you to be aware of a process called baking and why it's worth considering learning. Baking is the process of transferring all the fine details from your high poly sculpt into your low poly model. It allows you to keep your model optimized for performance. 
without losing the detailed features you've worked hard on, such as wrinkles, pores, and surface textures. When you bake, you end up creating something called texture maps, like normal maps or ambient occlusion maps that mimic the high poly detail on your low poly mesh. This way, by applying these textures onto your low poly model, your character still looks intricate and realistic, but remains light enough to use in real-time applications. The good news is that there's software like Substance Painter that simplifies the baking process, making it really quick and beginner-friendly. So while you can go straight to texturing, learning how to bake, especially with tools like Substance Painter, will elevate your work, especially when creating game-ready assets. Now that your model is unwrapped and ready, it's time to dive into texturing. This is where you'll give your stylized character personality through skin, clothing, and other materials. It might sound a little complex, but don't worry, I'm gonna break it down into simple steps and you'll see that it's, it's, it's a lot easier than it seems. So when it comes to texturing your character, two popular tools are Substance Painter and Blender. Substance Painter works more like Photoshop using a layering system that lets you paint directly onto your 3D models in real time. Blender, on the other hand, uses a node-based system, which gives you creative control control over your materials. While it may take a little time to get used to, it's a really powerful tool for achieving your desired styles. Now that you know a little bit about maps, here's a simple way to think about the texturing process. Number one, start with the base color. Choose the main colors for your character's skin and clothing. Number two, add normal details. Now if you've already baked your character like we talked about earlier, you're going to have a normal map from that. If you didn't, you can create a new normal map and add some details like skin pores, fabric patterns, and anything else you you can think of to make your character look more interesting without overwhelming the stylized design. Step three is to adjust your roughness. Decide how shiny or matte each part of your character should be. Skin will typically be smoother while clothing might be a little more textured. And step four is to incorporate other maps. If needed, you can add metallic maps and height maps for accessories and extra detail. I have some tips for success when it comes to texturing. The first one is to preview often. If you're texturing in Substance Painter and you know that your character is going to go into Unreal Engine eventually, I would recommend importing your character early and seeing how the colors change when you switch over engines. Sometimes it's going to be a little different than you think. So instead of texturing your character all the way through and then switching to Unreal and realizing that it doesn't look the way you, you realized, make sure you, you import your character early so you can see how your textures are going to actually look. The next tip is experiment. Don't be afraid to try different textures and colors. Texturing is a creative process and there's no one right way to do it. Some of the coolest textures that I've ever made came from pure experimentation. And my third tip is to learn and explore. We have a ton of online tutorials and breakdowns on Stylized Station, our YouTube channel. And we have other courses on texturing that are gonna help you develop your skills. And there you go. That's, I don't know, that's all I can think about right now when it comes to creating a character. Now, it's not so scary when you get everything broken down like that, is it? But there's so much more, like the intricate technology behind rigging and animation and all the exciting stuff that comes with that. This guide has given you a pretty comprehensive look into what it takes to create your first character. If that's all you wanted to know, then I will see you next time. However, if you're eager to learn more, I highly, highly recommend you check out our brand new course, The Character Artist Handbook. With over 15 hours of engaging content, you're gonna be well on your way to creating your first character. Okay, self-promotion over, I swear, I swear. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see what you create. I will see you on the next episode of Stylized Station.